Hi there, you're watching the Gardens and Graveyards channel. My name is Charisma and today we're meeting in the medicine garden and we're going to finally plant up all of these fun pots that we just placed out on this new extension to our terrace. So I'm predominantly planting all mint and a couple of times are gonna get transplanted as well. So first of all, I'm going to prep all the pots. I, I have holes in all of them. They already came uh, pre-drilled. And the large pots have like little rubber stoppers. I was contemplating leaving the stoppers in because of the mint's so invasive. But I think we're going to be okay. It's just one good size hole. I'm going to remove the stopper so it does have drainage. And... I'll be able to see if any roots are trying to come out that bottom hole. Um, I'll just have to check them periodically and they'll be sitting right on top of the cement pavers so they won't be able to go very far very fast. Um, the hole is kind of big so I'm going to put a little piece of landscape fabric over it just to catch all the soil but it'll still be able to drain through. I'll fill each pot with about a third the third bottom of each pot will have compost in it so that when the roots finally get down to the bottom of the pot, they'll have some really good, rich nutrition to, um, you know, suck up, to, to take up. Um, and then the rest of it will just be raised bed potting mix. I will add some Espoma organic plant tone just to give it a slow released, nutritious food. Um, and then after I get them all prepped, we'll go over all the plants that we have. They're all like little four inch containers that have been holding over for a couple of months and they're looking pretty straggly. So I will have to do some cutting back, but I have absolute confidence that no matter how small these mints look when they go in these pots, they will completely fill them in in no time at all. So first of all, there's plastic on the big pots that I'm gonna remove, put landscape fabric in all, all the pots that have too big of holes, fill them up with soil, and then we'll get to planting.
right, so I picked up these mints from the Time Garden, with the exception of one. Um, so first of all, we have this mint, which is the Chewing Gum Spearmint. Um, it smells just like Wrigley's Spearmint Gum. And it doesn't tell me how tall it gets. I've grown spearmint before, though, and it gets quite, it can get quite large. Um, I would say maybe two foot by two and a half foot. So this will definitely go in one of the bigger containers. Um, oops. Okay. Just, uh, we'll talk about cleanup in just a minute. What, I, what I'll do to make sure that they have the best chance. All right, so then this mint is the Mountain Mint. And it says that it takes full sun to part sun. It's uh, 30 inches. So uh, non-spreading. So two and a half foot, probably two and a half by two and a half. It has this really nice ferny texture. It's definitely stressed should be a little more chartreuse green than this there's some brown tips and whatnot it just can't I just can't keep it moist enough because it's pretty much all roots in there all right then we have the uh, black peppermint it says this is an excellent tea plant grown commercially disease re resistant um, Mitchum black peppermint it has these nice dark purple black stems. Um, this one will try to escape like that. If this had touched the ground anywhere, anywhere there's a leaf, like right there, it would send out little roots and root itself into the ground and just keep propagating itself that way. Um, so there's that. And then this is the, oh God, see, this is the worst one. <laughs> uh, this is chocolate mint. And when you rub, rub the leaves and smell it, it smells like Girl Scout cookies, like the chocolate mint Girl Scout cookies. This one I'll have to cut back quite a bit. I may be able to take a couple of cuttings off of here and, um, propagate those and then cut them down to the smaller pieces that are growing in here. But I've grown the chocolate mint before. It gets quite large. So I think these three are definitely going to go into larger containers. Um, this one is the mojito mint, which is actually mint and velosa. It says it has hints of grapefruit. And it's vigorous, um, perfect for mojitos, mojitos, mojitos. Um, and it also has a really beautiful uh, dark stem, strong. It has a, a ruffly leaf compared to the black peppermint. You can see the difference in their leaf structure. Um... Yeah, we'll just see. I might, um, I might actually keep the chocolate mint in just a smaller container and just keep it cut back. And then this one is the pineapple mint, fruity fragrance and taste, roundish, round variegated leaf. Um, and this one does say just ever so slightly smaller. So two of these. Are gonna go and the oh they only have one <laughs> well we'll definitely do four in these big pots we'll do one in this uh, container here and I want a red container about that size uh, for the other one so I might just pop that one in a bigger uh, just a nursery pot until I get my red containers um, and then the rest of these containers will be time. And underneath this volunteer comfrey, which came from 
the mother plant up there. I have woolly thyme, which I will transplant into one of the containers. And underneath this blueberry, I have a creeping thyme that I'll transplant into a container. Um, I also have this standard thyme, but it has gotten quite woody and I don't think I want to uh, try to save it. Um, I might just get a new standard thyme to plant and then we'll just remove this eventually. So that is, that's the goal right now. Um, I am going to clean these up and um, I'll show you exactly what I'm going to do in that regards to help them kind of rejuvenate and be a little bit happier in their new homes. So for example, I've got this pineapple mint and there's a lot of dead foliage on it. So I'm, first of all, I'm just going to strip off all the dead foliage because that will just make it look so much better right off the bat. I'll take off any of this, um, any dead leaves on the bottom and like this one the tips are burnt so I'm just going to take that out it's just like a general cleanup here let's just see what happens um Okay, so generally that's where we're at with that. The next thing I'm gonna do is I will cut this one down. There is a leaf, or a leaf down in there, if you could see that, right there. So I'm gonna cut this stem right there. Take off all these dead pieces, for crying out loud. And it doesn't need to be this tall. I can just cut it where it's straight, take off these lower leaves, and then pinch this one so that it'll cause some branching and we'll stick this in soil with this plant. And I will probably do that with a handful of these leaves. So we'll work on that in a little bit. I could also technically take this, take these bottom leaves off carefully and pop this in the soil uh, and propagate. This one is looking a lot better than other ones. So we're just going to take off the pieces that don't look super healthy. Take, out, take Get rid of all this dead foliage in there. Um. Pitch these back to help with branching, which I'll probably do when we get to planting it. So Overall, this one is probably the healthiest. <laughs> all right, then we have this one. Again, we'll just get rid of all the dead foliage on the bottom. You can see there's a whole bunch of little babies right here. Um, 
So it will definitely be just fine. Um, some of this really spindly stuff, I'm just going to cut it down to there. Um, and let's see. This one that's growing all crazy, I'm just going to take it out. Uh, it's just this. Right. Now, I could certainly save all these uh, delicious leaves and throw them in a drink later. We've got this one, which is looking pretty good. I'm going to just pinch back this main stem so it'll branch a little better. Like that. And the rest of it I'm just going to leave alone. This one is also looking pretty good. Um, got some burnt leaves that's from just not ha getting enough moisture because there's not enough soil. Um, again, we can just kind of cut this one back to encourage branching. Maybe do a little propagation. Okay. This one, like I said, is the worst. <laughs> and we're gonna do a lot of pruning on this one. So, but you could see there's some new growth right here. So I'm just gonna cut right above that. And this one's really weak, so I'm gonna just cut it out. Same with this one. Um, this one. This one has a little, a little bit of growth there. A little bit of growth there. This. Just take those out. it in here in the middle. Okay, I realize that looks pretty brutal, but uh, I guarantee you it's so much happier this way. And I can take some of these and create a couple of cuttings for this. So, um, this one, you just take off these big leaves. You can also just cut these leaves um, and re oh, <laughs> reduce how much leaf there is and so it still can photosynthesize. Yeah, that's not so great. 
these are good ones to propagate. So, okay, there we go. So those are all cleaned up and now we can plant. All right, so to begin with, I have this creeping thyme that I pulled out from underneath the blueberry and it it's definitely been creeping. It's, see, it's got roots and then more plant. And then, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut some of the, this root action off and just get it to where there's some roots and that can be planted in here. And it's just, I have plenty, so I'm just going to keep finding the healthiest pieces. Uh, that have some roots on them. I just cut back the super long pieces to give the plant a chance to grow and bush out. Some of these are going to be more like cuttings and not have any root pieces on them. Let's see what happens. And there's a nice little root system. So I just can bury all of this in the soil. What I'm doing is just putting each root system in and piling soil up around it to create a thicker plant. So if I have these stems, I just tuck them up right next to each other like that. And it's like growing like this. There's some roots right here.
I'm gonna try to get these roots down. Alright, so in this collection, I have a little Corsican mint that I'm going to put in this small container. And then I'm going to put the mountain mint in this bigger container. I've got the chewing gum spearmint that I'm going to put in a slightly smaller container. And I will put these cuttings in here. And I'll top dress all of them with compost. benefit of cutting back herbs. Now I can make some tea. Mint and thyme. It smells so good. Just like rub it all over myself.
Well, I'm so excited to have this project done, especially since all those mints were struggling so hard. Really glad to have them in pots where they can thrive and be happy. And um, yeah, all the pots are full. I just wanna get a red pot for that mint there. And then we'll get a red pot there and transplant the mint that I have in that pot up there. And then it'll be complete as far as mints go. Um, let's take a closer look. So on the bottom tier, I have Creeping Time filling this pot. I cut back quite a few of the flowers. Um, there, if you take off the flowers of herbs, it encourages the leaf growth. Whereas once they start flowering, they think they need to go to seed and um, they stop producing foliage. So you want to keep the flowers off of your herbs um, if you want to continue to have foliage. This creeping mint, uh, the root system wasn't fantastic on it, but they do root themselves pretty quickly and easily. So I'm pretty confident that we'll have a good full pot of creeping thyme. This is the black mint, black, is it black mint? Peppermint, black peppermint. And um, this is the main plant. And then I did five cuttings around and we'll just keep them moist. They will root in pretty easily. Um, yeah, it'll be fine. And then this is the mountain mint. And I did, I took off a top that was super tall and um, kind of not uniform. And then I just popped it in the soil next to the crown of this plant. So it should be a nice big shrub um, before too long. Right here, I have Corsican mint, which is a, a creeping ground cover, which really isn't useful for any kind of medicinal or um, tea or anything like that. It doesn't get any taller than this right here, but it creates a really beautiful mat. It smells really good. And it's just kind of fun to look at different forms of mint. Um, I had it covering this entire bed right here, but then this succulent took over. So um, you can still see little bits of it here and there. There was also elfin thyme in here, um, which completely got crowded out. Anyway, so this will just give me a little, a little piece of it. I might eventually um, come through and create a ground cover of the Corsican mint where the mint sits. But for right now, we're just going to keep it in this pot. This is the chewing gum spearmint, which it's not, spearmint's not my favorite mint um, for drinking teas or making um, tea blends. So um, it is really tasty in different drinks and in water um, and on ice cream. So I do like having it a little bit, um, you know, available in my garden, um, but I don't need it in a pot that big. So this will help me just keep it kind of controlled. This is a woolly thyme that we transplanted out of the bed and it's just really beautiful, soft kind of texture. Um, it'll just kind of drape over like this. It's got that blue gray hue to it, which is kind of a fun, different texture to have. That is the chocolate mint that I just put in a bigger pot so it can grow. It was very root bound, it almost had no soil left. So I think it'll be happy there. Um, we're just gonna baby it along until we get a red container for it. This is the mojito mint and um, I really love this foliage. It's so fun and roughly. I did the same thing, just created half a dozen little cuttings that we put around the outside so we can create a big nice bush. I did transplant. Um, I realized that my, my standard time was actually two and the one that looked the worst is still in the bed, but I went ahead and removed this one and put it in this pot, took off some of its, um, you know, too tall and spindly 
foliage as well as some flowers and just gave it this nice little shape. And then back here we have the pineapple mint and it can handle just a tiny bit more shade because it is that variegated leaf. So it is underneath this rosemary, which I just will have to keep trimmed up, limbed up, so it doesn't um, completely block the sun. You could see it's in full sun. Now it's one o'clock in the afternoon. So I think it'll be fine. Um, and again, I really like this mint in like desserts more than I like it in any kind of a tea blend. We will eventually have a red pot right here, a bigger one, and we will just do a bunch of cuttings of this mint um, that's growing in this pot, which I've tried to remove a couple of times and it just keeps coming back. This pot's gonna get completely, um, this whole area is gonna be kind of changed. So I do wanna remove the mint um, officially. So uh, I will, we'll move it into a big pot into the herb garden. Going back down, just one tier here. I have a pot here, which eventually I will likely do either an elfin thyme or some other kind of thyme. Um, but I had this little bush basil that gets 12 by 12, 12 inches by 12 inches. And it's been in this little four inch container. It's, um, you know, it, it needs some food. That's why it's so, very yellow. Uh, I think it'll green up. It is a chartreuse color normally, so it won't green up tremendously, but a little bit more than that. I took off the little flowers and um, we'll just see how it goes. This is an annual in my garden, um, so it'll only need to be there for the win or for the rest of this season, and then in the winter we'll remove it and put something um, better for my garden in there. Um, or we might just save it for basil, I don't know. Uh, but definitely really loving how this like waterfall of mint turned out and I'm really excited to have all this mint in my garden. I mentioned before that all of the mint is sitting on uh, pavers with the exception of this one, which this has very shallow roots, so I'm not worried about that. Um, all of them otherwise are on cement pavers so I can control any root uh, growth trying to escape into the garden. Thyme doesn't really do that. I do have a mint right here that I'll have to watch. But these um, containers have built-in drip trays, so those roots will have to come out the drip tray. There's no hole right here, so it'll have to come out the drip, drip tray, and I will start noticing that before it gets into the ground. And I may even just get another paver to put that one on just to make absolute certain that it's not going to escape into the garden. Um, I know it seems a little um, extreme that I am taking these extra measures, but I lived in a garden many years ago that had lemon balm escape into the garden and it was about a quarter acre and every time we mowed the lawn the entire space smelled like pledge lemon scent uh which was you know a unique and fun experience but um and as a renter and an early gardener i didn't like really care because I don't like grass and it was mostly all weeds. So we just mowed it down like twice a year and it smelled great and we just left it alone. But um, in my garden now, I definitely don't need any escape artists. Um, there's enough invasive and species out there to, to do that. Like the horsetail and the morning glory and bindweed, the blackberry and the bittercress and the buttercup, <laughs> the, the native fern. <laughs> She's all the things. Um, anyway, there it is. There's the project. It took us several days. It's been a huge pleasure. It's such a motivator to just continue in to both sides of the terrace and really clean it up and make it um, 
make it beautiful again. It's um, all grown together and it's just time to, you know, do some divisions and make some changes. So I'm excited to see um, how the progression of that ends up being, but this is a fantastic start. It looks so good. So thank you so much for hanging out with us on this mint journey. I hope you're celebrating your life and we will see you in the next video. Bye.